Welcome to another episode of Sisterhood of the Scalpel. I'm Dr. Miriam Zamani. And I'm Dr. Julie Connor. And we're two board certified plastic surgeons here to talk to you about everything related to plastic surgery, dermatology, and skincare. And we're here to talk about life as well. Today, what we're going to talk about, you know, we talk about different levels of treating your skin, and we've we've talked in other episodes about skin care. We're going to go one step deeper. We're not going to surgery yet, uh, but we're going to start with a little bit deeper. We have three broad categories to improve the skin without really going under the knife. That includes chemical peels, lasers, and radiofrequency treatments. What all these treatments have in common is that they do deliver a little bit of controlled injury to the skin. And what that does is that it helps to remove some of the dead cell layers, but also signals to your body to start producing newer cells and having collagen turnover all contributes to better skin health. If we start with the first category, which is chemical peels. We have to think about what we're trying to achieve with chemical peels. We are often targeting different things in the skin level and how deep we want to go. So what are we attacking and how deep are we going? Now, we have different types of peels. One of the most common ones we use in our office, is something called Cosmolin, which is great for pigmentation. One of the best peels we have available for us for pigmentation, especially after melasma, after childbirth, it is a great one. We have other, a little bit lighter ones, like kojic acid peels, and oftentimes we combine things. So we need to deal with pigment, but then we also need to deal with texture and tone. So we have different lasers like glycolic acid peels, TCA peels that actually can help. Think of it as smoothing out the surface. So we often use those in patients with acne as well as damaged skin or aging skin as well. But again, what are you doing? As Dr. Z said, you're controlling the damage and you're getting new skin growth, new collagen growth and removing some of the damaged growth. And that's how these peels work. Downtown can really vary. Some can leave you just a little pink and like a little bit of a glow. Um, I, w I went once to the Vienna Ball and the day before, supposedly people were going to the dermatology office for a feather light TCA peel so their skin glowed. You know, So you can do that, but then by day three, they were really peely. So you have to look at each one individually, which one's right for you and what we're trying to achieve. Next, we have lasers, which much like the chemical peels we were just talking about, have that same um, customization, that they have different uh, treatment targets and have different layers of efficacy being and downtime and how much turnaround you need for that. Um, but what you have to know about lasers is what are they? They're basically high energy focused rays of light and they are made up of different wavelengths of light. And each of these wavelengths has a specific target in this. This is what we call our chromophores. Why do we have so many lasers? Because each target is different. Exactly. And the main ones that we look for are in our red blood cells and our blood vessels. So it targets that. We have melanin, which targets the pigment that's in our hair or in our skin. And that's what we use for our laser hair removal. And then lastly, we have water. And water is 90% of what makes up the contents of our cells and our superficial layer of the skin. And that's really the kind of lasers we use to rejuvenate the skin. The big broad categories of that are erbium or CO2 lasers. Um, and even within that, we have to understand that lasers still fall into different categories. We have what we call ablative lasers. And what they do is essentially they shave off a very thin layer of that superficial layer of the skin, helping to, again, remove some of the dead cell layers along with it, some of the changes like fine lines and wrinkles, the pigmentation changes we may have, and other things like that. Um, and it's very much like when you go and you mow out the lawn, you take off that higher levels of grass that have had more exposure to sun and other damaging um, factors outside. Then we have what we call fractional ablative lasers. And what they do is like when you're seeding a lawn and you aerate the lawn, that's what they do. They deliver a little bit of targeted damage to the deeper layer of the skin and that helps with the collagen turnover better. And so, um, that gets a, sometimes can be a little bit more effective in building up the strength and the elasticity of the skin. Now, to make things a little bit more complicated, we still have a third one, a <laughs> third layer that's called um, fractional non-ablative lasers. They do the same thing in terms of getting down to that deeper layer of the skin with those focused um, rays of light, 
but without creating any holes on that superficial layer. So what that means is that there's a little bit less redness and um, recovery time with it. Now, again, every laser has a different intent and purpose. And a lot of times we do mix in um, mash lasers even within a category. So really it comes down to that's where the consultation per, um, portion of an appointment is really important to get down to what you need for your skin. And I think the key when you're coming in for a consultation is not to say, I want this laser, but you've got to answer a few questions. What are you looking for for results? How much downtime do you have? And how much downtime are you willing to tolerate? Because the more ablative or the more deep or the more uniform injury gets the better result. Mm -hmm. But it has more downtime. And I think that's really what the key is, is picking and choosing the right thing for you because what might be right today may not be right for later. And, and that's where you want to have that consultation with your, with your surgeon, your dermatologist, as to what is right for you. Absolutely. So, so that's talking about tone, texture, color of skin. What about looseness of skin?